Well, well, that's just not true. <laughs> Lie, liar. Fiction, nonfiction, science fiction, real, true stories based on truth. Who cares? So? <laughs> so? Uh, I was interviewing this kid once and I was asking him all these questions and his answers were amazing. So? I was talking to the great artist Steve-O once. He'd gone down to uh, Costa Rica or somewhere in South America. I don't remember where because it's uh, not legal yet. Uh, and I was asking him about stem cells. And, you know, I had fears about mortality and health. And I just don't want to do the work. It's the last thing money can't buy, right? Is it can't be, I can't buy um, immortality. Uh, but I'd heard about Jeff Bezos and uh, you know other wealthy people that were doing these stem cell things to human growth hormone. I, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. I just know that you have to go somewhere. It's really expensive, and all the things that I'm into: traveling, quest, hard to get. You know, not easily accessible, expensive. And I have a lot of friends who are doctors who I told them I was about to embark on this journey to get every possible type of experimental. And they said, hey, do you trust um, your friend Steve-O or do you trust uh, the medical advice of actual professional doctors? I was like, I, you know, well, why do you say it like that? And they said, uh, each doctor across the board said, uh, that stuff 100% does not work. It's complete placebo effect. I said, what's placebo? Placebo effect. I mean, I know what placebo effect is, but I just looked it up. It's something that's not true. It shouldn't work. It does not work. And yet the human brain, the human mind-brain connection to your body wants to believe it's so bad it actually works that wasn't an actual medication it was just sugar pills but you want it to cure your ailment and your disease so bad that it actually did your brain did that that's how powerful your mind is so wait if it's a placebo effect then what you're describing is faith it's a faith-based effect, and it actually works. Uh, I, I could sit here and go into story and story after miracle and miracle in my life. Things you wouldn't believe. Try me. You know, I had a lot of faith as a kid. I had a lot of hope. Hopes and dreams. Dreams of flying. You know, even before I got into comic books. So I was attracted to Mary Poppins and Superman because... I had already dreams of flying. Don't tell me you're going to tell me a story where you flew. I won't tell you that story. But just things that shouldn't have happened, you know? Since I was a kid, I believed I had faith because my mother had faith in me. Many others, and even myself didn't, but she believed in me. And then later on, she had brainwashed me to believe that I would be the greatest artist in the world. That people all across the world would know my name, that would purchase my art, that I would be famous, that I would make tons of money. The odds of that happening, the odds of becoming a self-sustained, self-employed artist is very difficult. You know, it's very difficult. There's many uh, of you out there that have made it, but there's many, many more that have not. And then within those ranks, to rise above and be one of the most famous artists in the world. Now I have friends that are even more famous than me. 
My friend Banksy is more famous. Everyone knows Banksy. I love Banksy. His art is clever. It's witty. It makes you think. And um, there was a time that I was envious and je- jealous of Banksy. He's a, he's a chaos agent. He's an agent of chaos. He's a trickster. He operates from the shadows. Uh, anonymity. You don't know what he looks like. You don't know what his name is. He speaks in riddles and tongues. And, um, you know, I'd sit there and go, man, why didn't I think of that? Why, why wasn't I that clever? Oh, man, that was so clever. That keeps coming to mind. He's not clever. That's not really my style, though. Sometimes it is when I've tried to emulate that, when I've been an agent of chaos, when I've been a trickster also. But my style's more blunt, open, honest, direct. direct. You, you don't... <clears throat> Placebo effect, faith. I believe that I would be the greatest artist in the world. And some of you have heard me say, well, you're not the greatest artist in the world. Well, I'm the wealthiest living artist on the planet. And by Asian standards, that would make me the greatest artist on the planet. And so I am the greatest artist on the planet. And the chance, the odds of that happening are so minuscule, are so great. Um, How am I saying this? The odds of that are so low in happening. And that's just one thing. As someone has once said, that's the least interesting thing about me. That you, you willed it into existence. Now I could sit here and talk to you about many other things that I've willed into existence by pure faith. I wanted it so bad. Someone's told me that's not possible. The data and the physics and the science on the planet would determine that that is not possible. And yet I have seen what I've seen. I've felt what I've felt. Well, you've also been to mental hospitals, David. So did you really see it? Were you daydreaming? Was it one of your ayahuasca trips? Ayahuasca? Was it one of those things? You, too, listening right now, also have experienced some stuff in your life. Maybe not a lot. Maybe it's just one thing. But there's nothing else to classify it as except for a miracle. You could bring in one of your doctor egghead friends and pick it apart, deconstruct it, and go, well, it was just this, and the lighting, and this, and that's why you believe that this. No. So, what's this all about then? Uh, uh, Placebo effect is real. Well, that's just placebo effect. Well, that's just placebo effect. Well, what you've just proven is that placebo effect is actually real. If you do something that's BS and yet it actually works because your mind willed it to, that means it actually worked. Oh, all the stem cells. I I never ended up doing it because I trust my friends who are doctors. But I'm just saying, if I didn't have doctor friends, I probably would have gone. And I probably would have went to the most expensive one in the most remote area and the most quack doctor. And I would have paid all the money to get all the umbilical cord stem cells injected into me and let's say scientifically it was supposed to do nothing and yet I went to those lengths to get it done my brain the way I know my brain can operate the mind-body connection would heal it have healed itself I would add 10 20 years to my life I believe that I truly believe that I've done that before and um And so we've trained our bodies to avoid confrontation from uncomfortable feelings. So instead, what our body does is it it brings us pain uh, to distract us from reality. What do you mean by that? We have a lot of pain in this world that's not real. Wait, so you're telling me my IBS ain't real, my depression's not real, my bipolar's not real, my nut allergy's not real, the pain in my back the pain in my hand, the migraines I get. You're telling me that's not real? No, of course it's real. If you feel it, it's real. I'm just telling you, your body is unbelievable. In the same way that we we train people how we want to be treated, right? If we act like 
idiots, then people treat us like idiots. If we, if we coddle, spoil, and train our body to treat us that way, then that's how our body will treat us. It'll coddle and spoil us. What are you talking about, man? Yeah, I did three tours of Iraq. Saved our country. You know what? I'm not making fun of soldiers. I'm saying I know a vet. He was my roommate in one of these mental hospitals. And he would brag on and on about how many people he killed and how many what he did for our country. And I'm not taking that away from him. I'm just saying uh, that kept him to hide behind his courage, to, to hide behind his violence, to hide the importance of what he did for a country. Every time his wife wanted to have a serious talk, gotta go, gotta kill some people. You know, safety of the planet, safety of the U.S., highest priority, gotta go. Okay, um, all right, but like when you come back next time in two years, can we, we really have to discuss our issue? Okay, gotta go again. President needs me again. This guy would rather go to another country where he doesn't speak the language, where it's hot all the time, and murder people than have a heart-to-heart, one-on-one conversation with his wife. Think about, just close your eyes right now and think about everyone you know in your life, including yourself, who's in physical pain. I'm not talking about like anguish, like heartbreak. I'm talking about physical pain where they have to have a, uh, you know, support around their wrist or wear a back brace or or has you know anyone who you know who has back problems arm problems uh, head problems uh, anything that's an ailment uh, reoccurring pain soreness tenderness our buddies are strong we possess great strength Are these the people, all the people that you know, are these people that have a lot of stress, anxiety, perfectionism, workaholism, neurosis, neurotic? Are these people that are always worried about stuff, have a lot of stress, make a big deal about nothing, busy bodies running back and forth? Are are, Are these people that you can think of Are they just chill? Are they like Buddha? Are they like Zen? Are they easygoing, chill people? I'll answer for myself. All the people I know that have pain in their body are stressful people to be around. They're stressed out. I am like that also. I was a future tripper. I never lived in the present. Uh Um... And then I read this amazing book. This is not a promotion for a book. Uh, This Dr. Sarno, Dr. John Sarno wrote this book, Healing Back Pain. I recommend it to everybody. Uh, He's passed away now. Um, uh, It changed my life in two days. Two days, maybe three days. I threw my back out. And in two days of reading this, I was running and lifting heavy stuff. There was a week where I had, I minimized it completely, but I had a super, super uncomfortable uh, meeting with my mom coming up that I had planned for. Uh, I had to let two employees go that were stealing from me and not doing their job. Um, I had a lot of personal... I did it right now by just trying to go through with it it was a heavy week I won't share all of the details but in my mind I'd be like you're the boss you're the man you got this you know you got it it's not a big deal but each one of those things was a big deal and each one of those things was scary it was scary to let someone go it was scary to deal with my mom it was scary and so my body I trained my body to be like Hey, when you have confrontation, wow, you hate confrontation, but you're so confrontational. I know, but that doesn't mean you like it. And so those things never go well. They end with you screaming and yelling, you hurting people, them hurting you back, hurt people, hurt people, the whole thing. I hate confrontation. 
So what should we do instead of confrontation? Let's throw your back out this week. Wait, so you're telling me when your body knows that you have uncomfortable, confrontational, uh, gross uh, meetings and, and, and uh, <sighs> uh, meetups with people that you don't want to have, that it will physically throw your back out so that you don't have to go to those meetings? Happens every time. I think about, wait, nothing happened and yet I got sick that week. There's a lot of pain. What I'm suggesting, what I'm saying here today isn't saying your pain isn't real. It's 100% real. It's your body transmitting those pain. But you also know that there's something called painkillers. It's medical. When you take the painkiller, you know, some people abuse these things. It makes the pain go away. You can tap into that. It just takes a little bit of discipline, a little bit of belief and faith, and teaching your body, teaching it. You've taught it up until now how to avoid. So the pain helps you avoid confrontation. It helps you avoid realness, real S. And so it, you've taught your body, I don't want to deal with this. I don't want to deal with that. So it's trained to distract. What is this, a therapy show? No, it's not. So where's the art part in this? Where's the creative part? Well, this is the part that would take some faith where you would have to believe me and believe in your body. Don't just do it once and go, ah, oh, it didn't work. Every one of you out here is an artist. Everyone is. That's what I truly believe. Whether you can draw, act, sing, play music, any of it. Every single person, in the same way every child is an actor. Every child is an artist. Every kid, when you see their art when they're three years old, you know, three, four, five, it all looks the same because we all are tapped into the same source. We have just learned this utensil. We just learned how to draw. And so that just reckless abandon of just drawing, no, no care of proportion and perspective. It just is the child's mind's eye. That's in us. So in that same essence, that same innocence, you find a quiet space in your house and you talk to your body. If you want to give it a name, give it a name. You talk to your body and you tell them it's going to be okay. You've grown yourself up. You're mature. You're not a baby anymore. You're not a three-year-old. You're not a child. And you have a lot of hard stuff coming up today, this week. But you don't have to do this anymore. You don't have to distract it with reoccurring back pain, with reoccurring shoulder and neck pain, with, with, with debilitating migraines. You don't have to do that anymore. And you have a one-on-one -on -one conversation. If you want to think about it as performance art or a play, go for it. But it's genuine. It's real. It's a placebo effect. Yeah, and what do we just figure out? Placebo effect is real. It's the secret. <laughs> I'm being serious right now. There's many moments in my life where people who have come across me have seen me talking to someone in the car, on the street, in an alleyway, and there's no one there. It's usually me talking to my body, telling me, okay, we're about to go do a very, um, I'm meeting my hero for an interview on a podcast. Uh, I'm about to go in for a huge job opportunity. I'm about to meet someone who's a, who's a hero of mine. Uh, I need to go into a situation where uh, I need to tell someone I have to let them go. I need to talk to someone about how they've affected and hurt me. Real talk. And my body doesn't know how to react. So it gets sick. And it's not all in my head. It's real. It really gets sick. It hurts. My body starts to hurt. And as long as I can focus on pain... It distracts me and I don't have to ever deal with the thing that I need to deal with. So I just tell my body, I don't need, thank you for looking out. It's, it's, it's that overprotective buddy. That's who your body is. They, I got you, bro. I got you. They jump in front of a, a moving car for you. 
You can thank them for that. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you for protecting me with pain, for distracting me from my, from what I really need to deal with by throwing my back out, for giving me headaches every morning. Thank you for that, but I don't need that anymore. You thank your body with love and respect, and you talk to your body and say, you can go now. You can go now and see what happens. Believe it. Do it over and over till it happens. We know we go to I, I love doctors because we live in a society. I'm so grateful we live in a time now where there's drugs and medicine and all these things to help with our pain. But talk to any doctor. None of that cures you. None of that cures you. It doesn't make you a better person. It just it's just a pause button, you know. Anyways, the problem with all of this stuff that I'm talking to you right now, and I know I'm 20 minutes in, so a lot of you stopped listening, is that um, a lot of you guys here, I've noticed, are very intelligent. You're bright. You're smart. How has that worked out for you? We live in a world full of chaos, of things that don't make sense, non sequiturs. The problem of living in a world full of chaos and you are trying to apply logic and science to chaos. How's that worked out for you? You cannot apply logic to so many things in your life that you've applied logic to. Yes, I'm not trying to argue with you, but I'm just saying we live in a world of chaos. And when you sit around, you go, I can't, who does this guy, what, what is this person thinking? They're not definitely not thinking what you're thinking. How, How did this happen? It happened because chaos reigns supreme, darkness, illogical. You're trying to apply logic to things that are illogical. So if you think talking to your body is out of this world, crazy, bonkers, cuckoo, momo, cuckoo. You're right. And that's why it'll work. Dosume.